Oh, hi. This week, I'm tackling this skirt that I am super in love with the fabric of. Look at me, starting out very good with words. I actually found this at a thrift store in Connecticut because anytime I go visit friends, I make them go thrifting with me because it's it's not a thing everybody does. And I've done it my whole life, so it just feels second nature. Like if I'm in a new area, I love going to secondhand shops, even just for window shopping. It's just super fun. Here's a little thrifting pro tip, by the way. Uh, go to rich neighborhoods. <laughs> It's not necessarily gonna cost you more at the Goodwill or whatever thrift store you're at because the clothing is still like garbage to those people, but rich people have nicer clothes and they're gonna, they're gonna throw them away just like it's nothing. I have noticed that I find really, really nice stuff in places like Cambridge, Massachusetts and Waterbury, Connecticut. <laughs> I'm actually Hooksit, New Hampshire seems to be where all the people from Bedford go, and Bedford is kind of a ritzy town, so I find very good stuff, including so much fabric, as well as like pretty nice clothes for no money. Anyways, classism aside, I want to make this skirt into something I would actually wear, because a little fun fact about me, I do not like pleats. There has never been a time I have been in something with pleats that I've been like, yeah, I appreciate this technique having been added to this garment. I just, I don't like it. The one upside of the skirt having been pleated is that we get extra fabric, y'all, and that's all I ever want. <laughs> I have to say the waistband actually fits me. One of the problems with this skirt is that it has a placket, which I don't, I don't mind a placket. I've made many in my time sewing, but the placket's in the side seam, which is where the pocket is. And here's something I'm going to just put an end to in my own sewing is putting any kind of zipper, but especially invisible zippers, on side seams. I'm just gonna cut open the back and add whatever I need to add to the back seam because it infringes on my pockets and I will not have it. Oh, this does also have a lining. I don't know that I need a lining for what I'm gonna be making. Here's one of the pockets for the skirt. It's one of the ones where the top is sewn into the waistband, gives it some extra stability. No problem with that. Look, ooh, great, a complete pocket where if you put your hand into it, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a functional fucking thing. Whereas this side, because the placket is here and you go to put your hand in, what's that over here? It's, it's your hand because the placket is part of the pocket where yes, you have the bottom part, but that's, that's no good. This also has a blind hem, which I'm going to take down. So yeah, I'm basically going to deconstruct all of this. I may keep the waistband because as I said, I like the height of it. It's a, it's a kind of narrow one. It does sit a little below my actual waist. I like high-waisted stuff, so it's certainly possible that I will take the waistband in a bit, but as far as the height of it, I'm, I'm into this. So let the deconstruction begin. I have one or two ideas for what style skirt I want this to be, but I want to see how much fabric I actually have once this is all unpicked. But this is the joy of working with already existing garments. You kind of have some parameters you need to stay within. That's something I was talking about when I did a live stream, kind of last minute on a whim on Friday when my subspace bag video went up. And yeah, that was something that Carrie mentioned. She really likes working within some garmental confines. I'm, I can't imagine that's an actual phrase, but we're going with it. <laughs> just poses other challenges and forces you to get creative in a way you may not have if you just had bolts and bolts of fabric. Oh, and also a little side challenge because it's a plaid skirt. We must endeavor to stray away from schoolgirl looking skirts. Ooh, this means I get to watch more of the Great British Sewing Bee. Just started season four. Four. And it's only getting better. I do have to say, was not a super fan of Patrick's mustache uh, because he is definitely a bonus eye candy element of the show for me. I'm glad he's gone back to at least like a little bit of scruff, but season one, season two scruff was was peak, peak Patrick Grant for me. Okay, I, uh, I finished another episode of Great British Soak Bee and God damn it, much like Bake Off, as I keep saying, I just, I get emotional when people go home and also when they win because you're like, you're in the trenches with them. I unpicked all of my stuff and I picked out a matching zip. I'm just gonna do a seven inch for this. And I think the waistband is gonna work. I was stressing myself out trying to unpick a lot of the little stitches holding it together. And I kept hitting these couple of patches on the end. So I was like, why are there so many extra threads here? Because there were buttonholes and that means there was a split in the fabric. So I just cut off where the buttonholes were. That's gonna make this be a perfect fit. There's an extra inch on either side. So I'll have enough for seam allowance and then I'll probably trim a bit at the end. Pretty high confidence in my ability to just throw a waistband onto a skirt as long as like the skirt top is fitted. And this will be a test of that 
working, like the idea that I have, because yeah, I, I'm, I've done them so many times. I know how it works. I know I can do this, but it's just, you know, actually executing it is something else. Oh, and the thing I'm going to attempt for the first time, I'm going to try to pattern match. I think that pretty much is just going to mean pattern matching the back seam on this show. This is really the only time I've seen people harp on pattern matching stuff. Where the front's going to be all one panel, so I'll just pick whatever stripe in the plaid I want to go straight down the center and just make sure it's, it is straight. And then, yeah, on the back, I'll just make sure where the zipper is attached, it, it, the plaids line up. Yeah, I don't see people harp on the side seams, but also that's going to be on a little bit of an angle, so you can't really do that anyway. Let me know if you are into pattern matching and where you focus on. I'm going to press out all the fabric, get all the seams sorted out. I am reusing the pockets from this because it turned out that the placket just was that like top part of the pocket that got sewn into the waistband. So I'm going to trim them down because I'm not going to sew them into the waistband. Oh, and for the actual skirt panels, I'm just using the Delphine skirt pattern. Kind of like a short A-line, I guess. It has a very like mod look to it. And I like how it went making that yellow skirt I did for the Tilly and the Buttons video I did a couple weeks ago. But I don't like that fabric. It's, it's just not, it's like canvas basically. I haven't worn it. I think the canvas was even stained. So it was basically a wearable, kind of wearable muslin. So yeah, I'm very excited to do it in this fabric. And it's possible I'm going to do it with teal fabric as well because I, yeah, just really like the style. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Okay. Let me iron stuff out and then I will cut out my pattern pieces. So to better show what style skirt we're going with, I figure I'd actually show you the pattern pieces. This is the front center. So this will be going on fold and then just tapers out a little bit. I think it'd be a pretty easy skirt shape to duplicate. It's straight across the top. There's just a little straight bit for the seam allowance. So it's, you know, like the five eighths right here. And then yeah, the back of the skirt just tapers wide enough. Like my waist is 31 inches, but I'll go up to a 32 just to give myself some, some moving room. And then my hip is 41. So I, I want it to at least taper out to 41 inches by the time I get like here where the junk is, and then just kind of continue that line going down to the bottom. So super easy skirt to make your own, you know, which is why I think Tilly's books are so good because they feel doable. It makes you feel really capable. Where anything that wasn't just an elastic waisted or gathered skirt, I was like, eh, no, it takes too much finesse. But like, this is so easy. These are the waist bean waist bean? Oh boy. Real talk. I had a lot of wine yesterday while we were watching The Godfather. I didn't realize it was the day of the Super Bowl, but it was certainly an enjoyable afternoon slash evening for me. Because then we followed up The Godfather with Brooklyn Nine-Nine, because why wouldn't you? Anyways, the waistband is a lot wider for the Tilly pattern. Though you take in like an inch and a quarter once you allot for the seam allowances, so it is narrower. But might as well work with the already existing waistband, which I definitely didn't lose and know exactly where it is. So looking at the waistband that I have, if I fold it exactly in half, right at the center when you fold this up is this blue stripe. So I'm going to find that in one of the big panels. This is just one of two. Look at how much fabric we have. That was a big skirt and I thank it for its services. Oh, interesting. Okay. So I'm looking at the fabric and the waistband was not cut on the green because I'm trying to find the blue going up and down to match it up, but it's going across here. And that's where a little bit of the stretch is where it doesn't stretch at all when you go top to bottom. Interesting. Okay. So maybe, I don't know. Do I line up the purple plaid or do I intentionally offset it and go with like the green? Uh, yeah, that looks more intentional or I think doing this emphasizes that the blue on the skirt is going across. All right, we'll do a green line straight down and that'll be the center, which actually it makes it easier because that's right where I'm going to fold the fabric because the front needs to be cut on the fold. This isn't over far enough. This is though. That's going to be our folding line. That was the sound of my tax paperwork falling to the ground, trying to make its presence known and not letting me forget about it. You will be temporarily avoided, but never forgotten. All right. Yeah, I think that's going to do it. And yeah, we'll fold right along this line. And since there is some like wobbliness to the fabric, I'm just making sure that these stripes continue so that it doesn't get off kilter once we're moving away from the center line. I am actually really enjoying laying this fabric out. Oh, I'm excited. Okay, let me get my pattern weights on here. Just super make sure that's still in the same spot. All right, and I'm gonna cut this out. All right, well, that looks pretty dead center to me. Cool. I think that's gonna look great. Oh, and something else to note, normally I would cut out and then fuse interfacing to the waistband, but there's already some structural, I don't know what this 
fabric is. But there's some type of interfacing going on in here. We're just gonna work with what we got. And now let's figure out the back pieces. I'm giving myself a half inch seam allowance on the back. I just have to cut half an inch past whatever point in the pattern I want to line up. I just also want to make sure that this isn't like upside down. I think it'll look weird if the front panel had the blue stripes on top and the black on the bottom, but this had black stripes on top and blue on the bottom. Part of me feels like I'm being too particular, but that is, that is the challenge in this project. I just cut the back seam to this last purple stripe here. A little bit of a surge edge happening, but it's all gonna get caught in the seam allowance anyway. Let's give it a try. The only way for me to figure it out is to give it a go. So I'll cut this layer out first and then see where we are. This is gonna take some tedious pinning and then I will cut it out. Oh man, also I wonder if matching up these latitudinal stripes is going to make inserting the pockets easier because then like it'll be obvious that they're all in the same position because it'll be like, oh, second navy stripe down is where the top of each pocket is. We'll see. I don't know. Okay, I think I'm happy with how this is positioned. Let's cut her out and start assembling stuff. So I can't emphasize enough how much I hate cutting out around pattern pieces where even just this aspect of pattern matching where I get to lay fabric on fabric and cut around that and it's malleable. Oh, living the goddamn dream. So my next step will be surging all the long edges. So side seams and then the center back seam as well as the edges of all four of my pocket pieces. I am gonna cut this curve down cause I'm not attaching it up into the waistband. So I just need to make sure my hand is still gonna fit in there and then just take it down at a point I feel happy with. And actually that'd be on this side. My pockets look like that. Great. I love when the adjustments I have to make are the fastest thing in the world. So yeah, let's get to surgeon. Going to start attaching the pockets. I'm gonna go right sides together I think I'll start like two inches down from the waistband, which is right where this top blue line is. And as I mentioned, it it is gonna make lining all this stuff up easier. A little bit smaller of a seam allowance because I did uh, shift things around a little bit. So I think I'm working a little narrower. So I'm gonna go with a half inch, I think. I'm just gonna mark a pin where that starts on all four pockets and then just line up the tops with that top blue line. Just go right sides together. So I was gifted this really rad uh, sewing light, which is something I used to have on my machine when I worked at the costume shop and I loved it. It really, really helped. And even for hand sewing or unpicking. So this being movable, I was able to like point it out while I was unpicking this because, you know, the thread matched the fabric really well. So it was kind of hard to see where the stitches were. Problem is I uh, just got my sewing machine back into the desk because I took it to a friend's house this past weekend. And uh, the first thing I did when I got back was set this light up. Thank you so much, Cheryl. It's such a huge help. But then I forgot that I didn't actually plug the machine in because there was already a light on. And usually my brain is like, well, if the light's on, the machine's on. Not the case. So I was just getting really mad at my presser foot just now because it wasn't going. And then realized like, oh, it's not actually plugged into the outlet. Here we go. Now I'm gonna press out all the pockets and I'm gonna press the seam allowance towards the pocket on all four. So just away from the center. And this fabric is a real bitch to press out. So I do have a lot of steam. You can hear it gurgling a bit. I have a lot of steam happening. I forgot how stinky this fabric was. Not stinky, but it just, it has that like older woman perfume smell. Honestly, it smells better now that I'm steaming it. It's like getting some of the, the scent out, which is a pleasant surprise to my nasal passages. Again, not a bad smell. It's just intense. <laughs> okay, now I have my front piece with the pockets facing out. I'm gonna take one of my side seams, eventually both, but just, just for the example I am showing you, I'm gonna line up the top of the side seams. The right sides are facing each other. I'm really gonna make a point to line up all of the lines. And if I'm trying to get something to line up super, super specifically, yes, obviously lining up the very edges, like the very, very edges, is a good starting point, but keep in mind you're going in a certain amount for the seam allowance. So I like to put a pin along where the actual stitches are gonna go and then check again to make sure they're lining up perfectly. Cool. And then yeah, so you're gonna stitch the top here and you're gonna stop and pivot here and then come around the pocket. So you're stitching the seam allowance toward the pocket on both sides, come around the bottom of the pocket. So you're not stitching anything here or else that would close your pocket and you need a spot for snacks. So you're gonna come back to the bottom point where the pocket attaches, needle down, pivot, come all the way down the rest of the side seam. All right, let's see how I did getting the blue lines to line up. 
Okay. It's probably going to be more noticeable down here. <gasps> Does it? <gasps> it worked! Yeah! Side two. Oh, you guys. All right, now I'm going to press the side seams to the front. And then, yeah, we will attach the waistband. Now, if I was working with just a plain fabric, I would find the center and then make a little notch at the top. But because we based the entire piece around this center emerald line. I know exactly where the center front is. It's coming together. All right, let me press this out and then yeah, waistband time. Cool, cool, cool. Also, yes, I have snacks. I have crackers and chutney. I've never had chutney before. It's like a savory jelly jam with my Stonewall Kitchen roasted garlic crackers, which are not at all flavorful. So thankfully this has all the flavors and it's very intense. Super not sponsored by Stonewall Kitchen, although the strawberry rhubarb apple jam that they make uh, is one of my favorite things in the entire world. Like favorite foods, top five list, hands down. They don't often have it, which is a bummer. So anytime I go up to York, which is where the like hub of Stonewall Kitchen is, I don't know if they're countrywide or just a New England thing, I'm not sure, but I think that like the original store is in Maine. And yeah, I always try to look for it there. If they wanna send me a bunch of that shit, I, I am here for that. <laughs> Should get a spoon or spreader of some kind, but I'm also just trying to get this done. So I need to not focus on the snacking part. So this is already together. So I want the part that has an interfacing on it on the front. And it had this bit that was folded over. So I'm gonna unfold that. So I'm gonna line up that center point. Oh, I'm all sticky from the chutney with that emerald stripe. Pin it right there. And then yeah, just work my way around. But I'm also gonna line up the edge of the waistband with the edge of the skirt. I'm gonna let it overhang just a little bit. And yeah, I'm basically just gonna try to fit the rest in here. All right, so I have that front edge of the waistband pinned right sides together to the front top of the skirt. So I'm gonna stitch that in, keep my seam allowance right up to where this fold is. I don't think it's gonna be too much of a hassle to fit this in. And again, the plaid is actually making it really easy to keep everything even on both sides because there's, there's lines, there's a bunch of marks everywhere. All right, here's how the front looks. I'm happy with that. The other thing I made a point to do is like, really keep the top even. I did a little finagling, which meant I had to shorten the seam allowance just to just to keep it all cohesive. I'm gonna serge these short ends real quick on the waistband, because I meant to do that before and forgot. The other end of the waistband that's still sticking out, it is already serged from the original skirt. Here are those edges. Cool. Now zipper time. Measure down from where the zipper stops are here. I'm gonna line that up. This fold, or if you're sewing two waistband pieces together where that seam is, I'm gonna line it up there. I'm gonna tuck it down just like a little bit. So that's stopping just below this fold here. And then if I measure down, the stop on the tape is right here. I'm just gonna take a pin, mark that. Ooh, I wonder if the plaid is also gonna make this part easier. So yeah, I'm just gonna mark the same point on the other side. So I'm holding the skirt back seams right sides together. Okay, so I'm actually gonna pin through both layers now and I'm going to stitch half an inch in all the way from that point where the zipper ends to the bottom of the skirt. To do normal stitches down here, then for me, I find it easier to baste the top section, press it out so that I know where the edges are and then just unpick the basting stitches. It's an extra step, but it makes life easier for me once it's actually time for the zipper. So yeah, I'm also gonna baste from that same point where the zipper stops to the top of the waistband. Here's my back seam. Not perfect in all the spots. Maybe I go back over this just a little, yeah. Rather than being annoyed about it, I'm just gonna go back over it. So yeah, there's like, a part where the stitching goes kind of towards the middle of the purple line and I want it right on the edge. So I'm just gonna restitch that quick and then we're gonna press the seam open all the way up. Oh, a hell yeah. Oh, it's so good. Okay, so yeah, from the inside, did you hear? Did you hear that snap? That's how excited I am. My body's exploding from the inside. <laughs> now I'm gonna unpick where those basting stitches were. All right, so there's our gap, but we have that nice Nice edge over here. As for inserting the zipper, I'm gonna get that top stopper just below the top of the waistband there. I'll pin in a couple places just to not give myself a headache. Yeah, I'm just gonna stitch this whole thing here, making sure the stop is kind of right, right at that center seam. Yeah, just do a row of stitching here. Then we will flip it and do another row of stitching on the other side so it's in. We still got some finessing to do, but this is where we're gonna fold the waistband down. So you want your teeth to lay flat like that. I'm gonna fold waistband over. This edge you already attached should have been 
pressed up into the waistband. Pretend it's still folded down and line up this edge down here. And then we're gonna stitch right next to the edge of the teeth all the way up on the outside so that when it flips out, the teeth will be at the very, very edge. Ooh, okay, I, uh, I had a mess up because, you know, the flappy bit at the top, this was sticking out in like the most prominent place. So I had to unpick it and then redo it. I think we're good. So let's fold this out. Is this making any more sense? You, you see what I mean as far as sewing that top bit? Mostly lined up. It's better than it would have been had I not adjusted it. Okay, so obviously there's a lot of zipper tape showing, but this is where the top stitching comes in. That finesse I was talking about. So it'll take a little finagling. Feel free to iron as you go, but I'm gonna like smoosh these edges together. Pin like crazy, baste it down if you need. Maybe, mm, maybe I should do that. Maybe I should get in the habit of doing that. And then just make sure you don't have this bit hanging down, you have it like tucked up. We're back, it's the next day. Girl did some hand basting that I, I just never do. And it, it's kind of in the name, like it's quick and not permanent. So it went faster than I thought it would and was like only marginally more time consuming than pinning the amount of pins I've been doing when I've been making skirts like this. So like, why not just hand tack it? I did also realize I didn't actually do that good of a job pattern matching the back. <laughs> I really gotta work on zipper installation, just having an across the board method for installing it. Cause I kind of go a little weird with the seam allowance every time I put one in and I don't know why. I always think I need a lot more back here, but I could have probably had half of this. But overall, I mean, it's, it's still pretty close. I think from a distance, as with most things, it won't be as noticeable. So yeah, I did. I hand tacked all of this, just like a really loose basting stitch. So now I can go over with a, I'm probably gonna do a kind of longer top stitch on the machine because it, it's just for appearances. That doesn't help hold the zipper in place because we already did those stitches and those were small. And then I also hand tacked the inner waistband in place. The original skirt just had that surged edge like hanging down. I guess you can do that, but I prefer having this because it also adds some more rigidity to it. So I will go over that with a stitch in the ditch, which is where you, you stitch like right along where a seam already is. One of many things I'm very thankful I learned about from that Tilly and the Buttons book. I, I cannot recommend it enough. I promise also not sponsored by that. I'm just absolutely smitten with that woman. I, I yeah, I can't express to you enough how much I appreciate that book existing and I cannot wait to get the stretch book. Even just since this year started, where what, first week of February? I, I've already grown so much in my sewing skills. Okay, all done. I'm sure to you it looks exactly the same, but <laughs> everything's stitched down. I tried to pull out as much of the basting as I could, but was black thread, which matches very well, which is helpful. And also it's a very busy print. But yeah, I'm happy with the top stitching. And yeah, I'm annoyed at what happened with the pattern matching, but just something to practice more. It was literally my first time. Okay, so for the skirt, hem, <laughs> everything's part of the skirt, huh? I'm just gonna serge the edge and flip it over twice and then do some top stitching because that's just how I like to hem things because it's the lazy person's method. And then, yeah, we'll make sure I didn't completely mess up the fit of it by doing all this pattern matching and, and make sure I can actually get it on me. Let's do it. Um, hey y'all. I love it. I love it so much. Look at it. Oh, it's so good. Glad it has pockets. The waistband still fits. Zipper, I mean, I probably won't be able to see this till I'm editing, but I don't think the zipper looks too bad, right? Until I have multiple layers under here. There we go. Yeah, it's not too puckery around. It is a little like tummy hugging, but so goddamn what. <laughs> I'm really happy with how the stripes are going down the front center here. This is honestly probably like the top I will wear with it. And yeah, I'm, I'm really happy. So yeah, I would call this a success. Definitely need more practice trying some pattern matching, but again, it was literally my first try at something like this. So intensely in love with this color palette. I can't wait to wear this. It honestly won't be too bad of like a spring fall skirt too, but I'ma definitely layer up some sweater tights under this baby and wear it for the rest of the winter. And I still have a bunch left over. So I'm definitely gonna fuck around with some bag ideas. I'm just pumped that I tried a new thing and I'm not disheartened by it not going perfectly because I'm kind of notorious for getting mad at things that don't 
work perfectly the first time, but the only way to get better is to keep at it. So yeah, I'm, I'm really, really pumped about how this came out. And thanks again to everyone that joined in on the live stream. I am going to post a thing on my Patreon of some project books I have already and let you all vote over there on what it should be. You don't have to be part of my Patreon to go vote for it. Although I'll be real, they're going to have more sway. Um, it's not going to mean that that's going to be my next video, but it will be the next project book in the lineup. Feel free to go over there if you want to check it out. Yeah, speaking of Patreon, thank you so much to everyone that's been supporting me over there. It's so incredible that I have so many of you pitching in towards me bettering myself. I, I wouldn't be able to take the time like I am without you all over there. All right, so yeah, I'm gonna keep working on my to-do list. I know coffee is not helping me hydrate, but I need it. And I will see you all back here with a new video next Friday. Yeep, thank you so much for hanging out. Oh, hi. Oh, goddamn, girl needs a haircut. Definitely almost just touched that iron because I'm a ham-fisted ogre.